Hi there, Mickey Mancus here, and welcome to Out the Back Door. When I think of fall, I think of apples. And when I think of apples, I think of apple juice. And I'm gonna make my own apple juice. I know exactly what's going into it, and there's no extra additives. I want you to join me to see how simple it is to make your own healthy, homemade apple juice. Okay, so Mr. Mankus and I went out foraging for apples. Um, when I make my apple juice, I love using a variety of crab apples. We go to an area that had old homesteads there before. Um, there's no longer any buildings or anything and the trees are just there. And so that's where we choose to go and pick most of the time. Um, I did get a fair amount right now, and the first thing I need to do is get these all washed and cleaned up. I will be picky kind of going through them. If there's any really mushy ones in there that we had grabbed by accident, I'm going to end up throwing those out in the front yard. Um, it's that time of the season. It's cooling off. The deer are starting to come into the yard and eating the crab apples, so I'll just pitch them out for the deer or the squirrels, birds, whatever, come along and eat them. So... Uh, generally, I throw most of my vegetation that is waste into the compost, but this time any of the bad apples I'll throw out in the front yard. So I'm going to start getting these into the sink. I'm going to fill up my sink with cold water and start putting these in here and giving them a good cleaning and everything. And then we'll get to the next step. All right, this is my first batch um, that I put in both sides of the sink. And oops, missed a leaf. Like I said, I'm not gonna pull the stems off or anything. It's not necessary. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna put all of these apples into my 40 quart stock pot. Just scooping them up, getting them in here. And I still have more apples to wash. And I'll continue doing that. And once I get all the apples into the stock pot, then I'm going to add water. I'll bring the water level up mm, just below the top apples. And then I'm going to let them simmer. They'll cook down slowly, but they're going to release their juices at the same time. I'll be using this strainer also to get um, all the apple pieces and everything out of my stock pot. And then I'll end up running the juice through um, my strainer. Because I'm making juice right now, and like I said, the variety of crab apples really lends a good flavor, a good mix um, to the juice. All right, I'm gonna heat this up and we'll come back for the next part. 40 quart stock pot and it's heaped full and I still have more in the sink. So I'm gonna put in as much water as I can without getting this to float and overflow. And I'm gonna start simmering this. I do have my cover, but I can't put it on right now. Little by little, the apples will cook down. And so then I'll add the additional apples that are still in the sink waiting to go in the pot. So, like I said, I'm going to put this on a simmer. Um, you don't have to be boiling it or anything like that. I'm expecting this should be all cooked down completely with the additional apples, probably in about hour and a half to two hours. The apples ended up cooking down a little bit longer than I anticipated because I had so many in there. Um, they were actually being pushed up as the liquid was boiling in here and it was kind of boiling over. I had a heap of apples in here. So I did smash them down some. Um, I was able to pull some out and put them in a strainer so that they'd start draining. Um, and then I took the rest of the apples that were in the sink and added them to my stock pot so that they could soften up, cook down also. So um, it's getting pretty late right now tonight, so I'm going to strain this out. I'm going to put it into another stock pot. I will be putting the mash into a separate colander 
and then um, once that drains well enough, the mash is going to go into like a five gallon pail. I'll bring that out for the deer tomorrow so that they can eat that. Once I get most of the mash out of here and strained, um, then I can start putting the liquid through my other stock pot. I do have another colander here and um, it fits right on top of the smaller stock pot. Um, I've got a flour sack towel here that I've gotten damp that I'm going to lay across there. And the reasoning I always have it damp um, before I start pouring anything through is so that um, if it's dry, my liquid that I'd be pouring into here would be wicking up the sides and I want it to start dripping down immediately. So that's why I get it damp. The color in here is a beautiful um, dark, dark blush and I'm hoping it'll stay as clear as it looks in here right now. So I'll be careful when I'm removing the mash so I don't stir it up too much. And once I get some of this strained out and everything, we'll take a look at it. All right, I have just emptied um, some of the juice that was straining from the mash and it is not going through the cloth very well. That is how thick it is. These apples are so full of pectin. Um, I think I'm going to actually put a couple of jars aside, smaller ones that I'm going to be able to use as a natural pectin in my jams and jellies from now on. I did say that I was going to keep some of this in small jars. I'll can it up. Um, to use as a natural pectin, but I won't add any sugar or anything to it. I'll leave it natural like it is. It got really late last night, so I am going to be canning up the juice um, today instead. I opened up a couple of uh, cases of jars, new jars. Um, in fact, Kerr canning jars. Um, these were some that I found at a big box store um, a couple of months ago when people were having a really hard time finding jars. I did find a few cases, so I picked them up. Well, I decided to use them for the apple juice today. And um, as I've said before in other videos, I like to have enough supplies ready on hand before I even get started. So that way, if I see that I'm going to run short, I've got what I need and I don't have to scamper in the middle of canning to go and wash more jars and everything. But I want to show you something. The lids and the bands that I got with these jars. Now, I opened this up and all of a sudden I'm looking. Can you see how bent it is? And I thought, well, maybe this is one of the jars that was on the very edge and it got smushed somehow. And I started checking the rest of the bands and they're all dented on one place or another. You're probably wondering, why would I have little itty bitty jars out for canning juice? Um, what I've done is I've pulled out enough, um, six cups worth of my apple juice and I am going to be canning it straight into these four ounce canning jars. And the purpose for that is another thing that I'm starting to switch over to. For my jams and jellies when I need pectin, I'm going to be using my apple juice. This is so thick and so high in pectin right now. This will take the place of the commercial powdered or liquid pectin. Right now, um, I like I said, I do have six cups of the juice set aside for the pectin jars and I have the rest of the juice on the stove right now heating up real well. That's really thick. Um, the longer that you're cooking it, the thicker it's going to get. So at this point, I'm thinking I'm going to have more of a juice concentrate once I put it in here. And if I open it up, I'm going to be able to add more water to it and mix it up and I'll still have a good juice. I would guess that I've probably got about 15 quarts or so of juice, um, straight juice, I haven't done anything to it yet, in my stock pot and I'm going to add a little bit of sugar to it, not a whole lot, probably two to three cups and that's it. Another thing I'm going to do a little different with um, the canning today, I'm canning juice and pectin but I would 
can it the same as juice. And most people water bath can. Um, I've actually got my pressure canner out and I have my two inches of water in there and I've got that heating up. I'm not going to pressure can it either. I am going to steam can it. And if you've never steam canned before, it's a simple process of using less water in a water bath canning situation, um, but you're not going to put the weight on your canner, um, pressure canner, you are just going to let it vent out for the required amount of time. So when I get the jars into the canner, what I'm going to do is put my lid onto my pressure canner as I normally would and lock it down into place. And those of you that do pressure can, you know that you have to turn up the heat so it builds up a good head of steam and comes out of the vent pipe. And then we vent for 10 minutes before we put our weight on. Well, when you get that heavy stream of steam coming out of the vent pipe, this is when we're gonna start timing the length we would normally water bath our jars. Um, the quarts I'm gonna do for 20 minutes, the little four ounce jars we would normally only do for like 10 minutes, but as long as I'm going to put them in my pressure canner because then I can double stack and get a lot more done at the same time, I'm gonna do the whole entire batch for 20 minutes. So by doing it this way, I only need that two inches of water in there. I don't have to submerse um, all of my jars underneath water like we do in water bath canning. And it's going to build up enough steam in there that we're steam canning. It's actually gonna be just a little hotter than our normal boiling so it's a good way of canning. Um, I'm putting less humidity into my air versus um, when I've got a rolling boil going, you know, my water bath canner is totally filled and I use less water. So to me, it's kind of a win-win situation, especially when I have to double stack and load my canner. Now, if I was only doing like a single batch of something and I wouldn't need to double stack, I would probably just do a water bath canning then. Um, I would go ahead and fill the water up deep enough where my jars would be submersed underneath water and then bring it up to a boil, process at the appropriate time, and then go from there. But today we're gonna be steam canning. So if you've never done that before, give it a try because it really works out nice. If you have a large amount that you need to can and you do have the capability of double stacking, you can do pint jars and double stack in there if you wanna do it that way. And just use your pressure canner, really works out nice. I'll show you the steps as we go through it. Right now I've got um, all my Tatler lids in um, a pot of water here. I need to bring these up to a scald. And so I've got the small ones, I've got the regular size mouth on the bottom here because I'm going to be canning the small ones last because those are gonna go on the top layer. And then um, we're gonna do the quartz first with the wide mouth and I've got the wide mouth in on top here. So I'm gonna get these on the heat and then I'm gonna get the sugar into our juice. All right, um, I've got three cups of sugar in here. I'll put three cups, but if not, whatever I have, I'll dump in. Um, for this amount of juice, I wouldn't put any more than three cups. That's my preference. So I've put three cups in, and I think I have approximately 15 quarts of juice in there. Um, I'm guessing right now. So I'm gonna mix this up. And I'm gonna heat this up um, back up to almost a boil. And make sure that my sugar is dissolved. And then I'll start jarring it up. Oh, there's a lot of juice in here. Oh. Okay, 
While I'm drying this up, I'm going to get um, just the straight juice that's going in the small jars. I'm going to get that on the heat. I try to get out every year and forage as many apples, different types of berries, whatnot, that I can make juices um, for us to drink because I know exactly what's going in them. I also enjoy using the juice um, mixed with like a sparkling water so I get my own flavored water. I'm leaving a quarter inch head space. Another reason I make my own juices is because I can control how much sweetener I'm putting in there, if any. Even the store-bought ones when they say they're 100 percent juice there's some type of a sweetener in there and it's just like too much and that's not necessary. I feel good about offering this to uh, the grandchildren and anybody else that comes over. And this is considered organic being I've gone out foraging for this. These trees have been there for decades producing um, their fruit and there have not been any homes around there, oh, quite a few decades. Um, depending on the variety of crab apples that I pick in the fall dictates the color of my juice. Now, this year it's a really nice deep red. Um, normally, it's more of a blush color. Um, I've even had apple juice more of a golden color and like I said it all depends on the variety that I pick and how many varieties I'm choosing. Um, I think I've got like two or three different kinds of apples in this right now. Um, they're all crabs but I have found that I like crab apple juice better than I do um, like a regular commercial type apple. We do grow eating apples here on our property, but the juice, unless I do a honey crisp and I actually don't want to waste a honey crisp apple on juice. Um, I'll make applesauce and can apple pie filling out of those, but I don't want to do a, a juice on that. To me, the um, more of a commercial eating type apple has a more bland flavor than the crab apples. So I discovered that probably about four years ago when I was short on regular apples and it was like, well, let's see how it works with crab apples. And that's all I've been using ever since. All right, while um, I was putting the bands onto the jars, I had a dozen jars filled up. Um, the lids and bands and everything were on, and I went to lift one up to set it into the canner, and the band and the lid came off, just like I had explained in a couple of my other videos, and that's what kind of made me leery about I didn't know if I was going to like these stainless steel bands or not. Um, fortunately, I had my gloves on when this happened and my jean jacket. And so when the scalding hot juice hit me, I did not get burned. Um, I tried different stainless steel bands on the jars. I ended up going to um, the standard issued bands that come with cases of jars. and. Got those on there. I am going to send the stainless steel ones back. Um, no, I ended up probably four more jars, five more, that when I went to pick them up, and fortunately I still had my gloves on, and I didn't get them up very high, they let loose and came off. So I don't know what the deal is. It's almost like they're a tiny two bit big. I don't know, but they're going back. I just thought I'd share that. I got 10 quarts into the bottom of my canner and I put my tray in between and I've got two more quarts on top. All right, I didn't have um, just the straight juice. Um, 
on the heat that long and it's thickening up and it's almost uh, it's starting to get a scum on it like if you were making jelly as long as this cooked down I don't think I'm going to have enough for um, 12 pints I mean 12 four ounce jars so I ended up with six four ounce jars for the pectin that'll help me out next spring when I make jams and jellies because I generally don't make a ton of jelly anyway in the jams you know any type of a jam or jelly you can cook without pectin okay now I can get these jars into the canner on the top layer and then I'm gonna finish filling up quart jars of what I can fit in there and then I'll show you the next step as far as steam canning all right, I did manage to get all my jars into the canner, double layered, and I didn't have to triple layer anything, but um, I am going to put my lid on now and seal it down, and then I'm going to turn the heat up so it starts venting. Once I start getting a really heavy steam event coming out of the um, vent pipe, I'm gonna start timing it for 20 minutes. As soon as the canner started venting hard, I set the timer for 20 minutes. I've got about seven minutes yet. And once that finishes, I'll turn the heat off from underneath my canner. I will let the steam come down to nothing before I go and remove the top of my canner. And then I will take my jars out and set them on a towel to cool. I got my jars of the apple juice and the pectin out. Um, I'm gonna let these sit and cool until tomorrow morning and then I'll take the bands off and I'll check to make sure that they're all sealed. Um, like I said, we really do enjoy drinking our own homemade juice because we know exactly what's gone into it. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, hit that notification bell and give me a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I'd really like to hear from you. So until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless.